probably could have guessed that. Mary and Joseph bring Jesus to the temple to uh, form the things they need to do for the law. And there are some people in the temple they meet who tell them some things about this Christ child who's been born. Verse 25 of Luke 2. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. <clears throat> A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people, Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, the sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I, I thank you for your word. I thank you that your word can change our hearts. And you can make us more like your son. I thank you for that. I thank you for this Christmas story, which is the uh, earthly portion of our of our redemption, dear God, how you came to earth and paid the price for our sins and rose again, that we might have hope, that you might offer the greatest gift in all the world, even eternal life. Father, I thank you and I praise you. And Lord, uh, I ask you to fill me with your spirit. And help me, Father, to teach and preach that which you've laid on the heart for the church this morning. Fill my dear life with your spirit, relay the message and sign. Father, speak to every heart here, guide and direct and teach and convict and encourage. Meet the needs of hearts by your spirit and by your word this morning. I thank you for the word that's gone forth already, the children's Sunday school hour and the adult Sunday school hour. God, might we just be more in love with you, more amazed at you, want to be more faithful to you, want to love our brothers and sisters. And Father, get the gospel message uh, to everyone that we can. And Father, to be among those who are earnest to <coughs> forward to your return. And Lord, we do pray and we do ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm 
message this morning, simply from the words of Simeon, mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Mine eyes have seen uh, thy salvation. And we're going to learn some things about that salvation that we learn from this temple meeting. Simeon gives us some Bible truth. Uh, he was a man filled with the Spirit. A man who was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Earnest that the Messiah would come. And he makes these proclamations when he takes in his arms God, the Son of God. What an amazing time that must have been. Well, first of all, we'll see this morning that number one, Jesus Christ came with divine preparation. Jesus Christ came with divine preparation. Simeon says, For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Uh, God's plan of salvation wasn't the plan B. Uh, he already knew that man would fall. By the way, he did not make a man fall. He knew that man would fall. And he knew what he would do uh, to give us the opportunity to be lifted from that fall and to trust him as Savior. He planned it. You remember that heartbreaking story back there in that Garden of Eden. Everything was perfect and beautiful. Adam married the most beautiful woman in the world. She married the most handsome man in the world. <laughs> and, and, and it started. But then what happened? They sinned against God. And sin came into the world. And death by sin, Romans says, and so death passed upon all men for that all had sinned. But God had the answer, didn't he? And in the wonder of how quickly God showed up with the answer in the Bible. We didn't have to wonder. He showed up right afterwards with the answer. In Genesis 3.15, he says, I will put enmity between thee, the devil, and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. I'm going to send one who's going to come through the seed of a woman. Now, when it comes to having babies and such, it's the man that has the seed. And the woman has, has, has the child and such. We know how that works. Not this case. This was the seed of a woman. It would not be a man. It would be a miraculous conception. God says, I will send one. He says, you'll bruise his heel, devil. You're going to hurt him. By the way, the devil thought, he had control over that crucifixion. He thought he was getting one over on God. And God said, I'll see what he lived. I'll use that in my plan. <laughs> I'll even write about it ahead of time. And he did. And he used that. And planned it out. And Christ was crucified. He said, you'll bruise his heel. And he was crucified. But he will crush your head. He'll bruise your head. And Satan's work was defeated on Calvary. Amen. And through the faith in Jesus Christ now, uh, Satan becomes powerless to maintain your soul and my soul. And ever to get it back uh, from the salvation that was given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. He came to earth. Speaking about this God coming to earth in Isaiah 53, 1 through 12, it talks about that. In the midst of those passages, it says, Isaiah says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now, the arm of the Lord often means the strength and power of God. But there in Isaiah, it also means the literal arm. The literal flesh and arm. The Lord, the God of the Old Testament, the Hebrew God, the only God in the world, would become a man. And he would have an arm that you can see. 
And he became a man. John 1 tells us that. God became a man. He was manifest in the flesh. Uh, Timothy tells, Paul tells us, he writes to Timothy. He became a man. And uh, speaking about this in Hebrews, the Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, that's Jesus Christ, that's God coming into the world becoming a man, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Those bulls and, and, and goats, God could not accept those as the final payment for sin. Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. But a body hast thou prepared me. God put on a body. Hebrews 10, 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Right here. It is to do thy will, O God. He did his perfect, God's perfect will. Then he offered that body he put on as a sacrifice for you and me. As the full payment for our sins. It was, you see, Jesus Christ came with divine preparation. God had planned it out. We saw it last week. In the message we mentioned Galatians. The Bible says, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. God planned it out. He sent him at just the right time. We talked about how Rome made all those roads. Miles and miles of thousands of miles of roads. Good for getting the gospel out. How Rome demanded peace. And if, and if there was a certain province that didn't have peace, then the ruler of that province had to answer to Caesar. Hey, you want your job, you better keep them quiet and peaceful. That helped them to spread the gospel. And by the way, the Romans came the perfectors of crucifixion. You don't find that much in history before that. The Romans. And God predicted, pre, uh, he, he, uh, he prophesied that Christ would be crucified. Psalm 22. They pierced my hands and my feet. That was before a crucifixion was even a popular uh, uh, death sentence. And, and so the time was ready. God prepared it. You see, Jesus Christ came with a divine uh, preparation. And so we as Christians, when we look at history, the Bible, you know, we've heard the story, Christ, history is His story. We wonder, can God direct my life? Can I trust God to direct the things in my life? Listen, if He can plan this out, folks, I think He can handle what you and I have to face. Amen. If he, if he can take care of the salvation of your soul and all the details are required for that, don't we think we can trust Him with everything else? Our money and our families and our time and our talents and our treasures? I think we can. I think, by the way, we're missing out if we don't. <laughs> uh, who else are you going to trust? Yourself? Uh, the world? The government? Who are you going to trust? You're going to trust God. Amen. And uh, he'll, he'll bless us. He came with divine preparation. You see, secondly, Jesus Christ came with divine uh, revelation. I would do that. With divine revelation. Verse 26. It was revealed unto him, Simeon, by the Holy Ghost, that he should not see death before he had seen uh, the Lord's Christ. Before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So it was revealed unto him. And God had showed him that the time had come. God declared Jesus Christ to be the Savior. I remember those angels in that uh, story in that first part of Luke 2 here? Uh, Behold, unto you is born this day, what? In the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. It's good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. To all people. He came with divine revelation. <clears throat> and we need that. Uh, we need to know the Word of God. By the way, we need to know what's in our own hearts, don't we? And the Spirit and the Word of God re reveals our hearts. Uh, we're thankful that He does that. Uh, 
the book of Hebrews talks about that. The word of God is quick and powerful. It says that uh, uh, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And piercing. The dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And it goes on to say, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know what's going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ? What's on the inside? That's what, that's what God's going to openly judge. You know what's going to be judged in the lost at the great white throne judgment, Revelation chapter 21? What's on the inside? That's what's going to be judged. And by the way, if you're saved, guess who's on the inside? <laughs> Glory to the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad about that? Amen? And by the way, as far as eternal life, that's the stamp God's looking for. And, and it won't be a mystery to him. He knows, it, he knows it's there. But when he reveals it, everybody else will know too. For sure. Uh, those secrets will be revealed. Paul wrote about that. In Romans 2.12 he writes, For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. He says this will happen in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men, the things on the inside, by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. You see, God knows on the inside everyone who's trusted Christ as their Savior because He put His Holy Spirit in them. And God knows on the inside everyone who said, whether it's said on the outside or not, He knows whether it's said on the inside, no thank you. Or I don't believe that nonsense. And by the way, that's what will be judged uh, one day. He came with divine uh, revelation. Christ has been clearly revealed to be the Son of God. And one day our thoughts concerning Him will be clearly revealed. He is the set cornerstone uh, that Simeon uh, talks about here. This child is set for the rise and fall of many in, in Jerusalem. Rise and fall of many. Listen, those who receive Him will rise. Those who reject Him will fall. And he came with divine revelation. Thirdly, we see from this meeting there, Jesus Christ came with divine illumination. Jesus Christ came with divine illumination. Simeon, right? Simeon says in verse 30, Mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Verse 32, He's a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Uh, the greatest thing that God had for Israel was this, that the Messiah would come through Israel. That's what he said. That's the greatest thing uh, that, 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 that could be uh, uh, an opportunity for a nation, that God would bring the Messiah through the, the glory of Israel. And he indeed came. He indeed came. Divine revelation. I'm glad the Holy Spirit reveals and or, or, or inspires, illuminates us, teaches us the Word of God. In Luke chapter 10 and verse 21 and 22, Jesus is thinking about how many intellectual people had turned away from Him. Yet many young people, even children, were believing on Him. And men and women who didn't have much education were believing on him. And he says this in verse 21 of Luke 10. In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, here it is, that thou hast hid these things from the what? Wise and prudent. And has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. And all things are delivered to me of my Father. And no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father. And who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom the Son will reveal him. 
but a wonderful thought. Jesus is marvelous. These scholars, all those uh, uh, plaques hanging on the wall in the office, said that's not the Messiah. Uh, we'll show you here. We look at all these books about scriptures that we've read and studied and learned. Look at all our degrees. And Jesus said, you missed it. <laughs> you missed it. Your human wisdom didn't give you any spiritual wisdom. You missed it. Yet these little ones, who many of them couldn't afford a copy of the scripture, they, they read, read what, what you read to them and what, what, what they could get from the synagogues and stuff. But when they heard this man speaking, they knew he spoke the words of God. And they believed him. They just believed him. They couldn't explain how he was going to accomplish everything that he said he would do. They just believed him. Amen. And Jesus says, I thank you, Father, you've done that. What a wonderful thing. Divine illumination. I believe when we share the gospel, God enables a person to understand it and to believe it. They would choose to do so. 2 Thessalonians 2.14 Paul writes to that church there, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the attaining of glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Anytime you give the gospel, God is calling the person to glory. He's calling the person to glory. And they can answer that call and believe every time the, any time the gospel is shared. It's a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. God's always loved the whole world, hasn't he? I like that. You know, I think about that light shone on Christmas night. That it, it, it shone to the shepherds uh, that, that as those angels came. And then sometime later, uh, as within uh, no later than two years. And light shined too on those wise men that came from afar. So it shined on Jew and Gentile alike. And God was bringing that message forward. Uh, I like that. What else can we learn? Fourthly, Jesus Christ came to <coughs> divine salvation. Jesus Christ came with divine salvation. Simeon says, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have what? Seen thy salvation. Mine eyes have seen thy salvation. I like that. Folks, God's salvation is really not a plan. It's a person. <laughs> God's salvation is a person. And yes, that was his plan. Uh, so his plan is a person. Jesus Christ is salvation. He that hath the Son, what? Hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God, hath not life. That's the truth. Now that may be hard for some to accept, but it's not hard to understand what God says. Simeon says, I've seen your salvation. It, he is salvation, Jesus Christ. God's way to be saved is a person, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. When they'd done that miraculous healing of that lame man in the temple, Peter and John, as they went up, as they went up there, by whose authority have you done this? They said when they couldn't stand the miracles they were doing like their Savior did. And Peter who was afraid to speak up before and to own him, at that time filled with the Spirit said, Acts 4.10, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. And went on to say in Acts 4 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's only one. Amen. Folks, God only has one salvation. God didn't need a plan B, okay? Uh, and uh, he doesn't have a plan B, it's believe. It's the only plan he has, okay? <laughs> believe in Christ. He doesn't have an A, I guess I'll put it that way. Believe in Christ. He's got one plan. One prepared salvation. 
speak to so many on visitation. Well, I've been to church. Oh, I've been baptized. Well, I've gone through catechism. I remember this denomination. I remember that denomination. And they give all those answers when they're asked this question. Are you sure you're going to be in heaven one day when you die? And many times you'll hear that. But sometimes, and it's always refreshing, you'll hear, oh, well, I'll ask him, well, yeah, I know for sure I'm going to heaven. Well, how do you know that? And sometimes they'll say, because I trusted Jesus as my Savior. And you know, those people are the happy ones. They're the ones that are sure. They're the ones that are upset you asked them that question about whether they know for sure you're going to heaven or not. You know for sure when heaven you die? Well, I think religion's a private matter. Mind your own business. <laughs> well, nobody can know that. Well, I hope so. Listen, I don't have a hope so salvation. Okay? I have a no so salvation. Uh, if it was up to me, I'd know so. I know I wouldn't have one. Okay, I'd lose it, all right? But it's not up to me. I know I have a salvation because of Jesus Christ. Uh, he came with divine, uh, divine salvation. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goeth unto the Father but by me, but by me Jesus says, John 14 says. Some have wondered. The Bible says about Simeon. As Joseph and Mary came into the temple. Can you imagine? Simeon's going to the temple, filled with the Spirit. He's already been told by God, you're going to save my salvation before you die. Maybe, I don't know if he, maybe he didn't know that day was going to be the day. But that day he goes in, and all of a sudden he looks, and there he is. Can you imagine? Oh my goodness. Oh. And he walks over there. And he takes the Savior of the world. He takes the God incarnate into his arms. And he says, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, let us, let us thou Thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Let us, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace, for it is thy word. Some have wondered when he was praying that prayer, was he looking up? Or was he looking down? Mm. <laughs> Lord, now let us thy servant depart. Because I hold in God incarnate. I see your salvation. I can hardly believe it. <coughs> it's so amazing. And I depart with a peace that I can't explain. Because this is my salvation. Right here. Right here. And by the way, there's no mistake in that one, is there? There's no flaws in that one. There's no weakness in that one. Lord, what a wonderful time that must have been. And by the way, that's what the world needs to do. They need to open wide the arms of their heart, amen, and receive the Lord Jesus Christ, what he's done. Ask them to forgive them and save them. Trust in him, and they'd be saved. Number five, we learn Jesus Christ came with divine tribulation. With divine tribulation. Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is sent for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, and a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. Here it is, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Spoke about that already. Wow. Set for a sign which shall be spoken against. That's a little different message than what the angels had, isn't it? A little bit more detail there. Of course, what would happen? Israel as a nation would first reject him. They would speak against him. They would label him a blasphemer and crucify him.
And the Bible says at that time that God blinded some of them. So they would not believe. It says, lest they should believe and I should heal them. He blinded them for a time to accomplish the death of Christ. If you think about that, that means if God hadn't blinded the leaders, they might have believed. That goes against the teachings out there about what lost people can believe or not. But because they could have believed had they heard the gospel and God wanted the crucifixion to happen, he for a time blinded them. It wasn't, it wasn't, wasn't a permanent thing. Paul said about the same people that, that they, they can also be saved and they don't remain in unbelief. You'll find that later on. He didn't keep them blinded. He blinded them for a time. Then when it was done, they could also have believed afterwards. Christ came with divine tribulation. It says to Mary, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. Boy, think about the struggles that Mary and Joseph had. Think about the struggles. Uh, Mary, in her, in her personal life. Here she is, she's betrothed to a husband. They're in kind of what we might look at as kind of an engagement stage, but it was still binding to the Jews and such. And she finds out from an angel of God, you're going to be with child. But wait a minute. I've been faithful. I'm getting ready to get married. I haven't been with a man. I've been faithful to God, faithful to the one I'm going to mar be married to. How's this going to happen? God says, I'm going to do it miraculously. And what does Mary say? Behold the handmaid of the Lord. That's amazing, folks. Because back in those days, there was only one way for a woman to get pregnant before she got married, okay? I didn't have to say back in those days, did I? There's only, there was only one way. Who's she trying to get? What's her and Joseph trying to cover up? See, they had to accept that judgment of the world and believe God. Remember those driving Pharisees? We've been not born of fornication. You were conceived, Jesus, before, you, before Joseph and Mary were even you know, together. By who knows who, they thought. <laughs> you know, who knows what. But anyway, but he wasn't. But, but she was a miraculous conception. She had to put up with that. Her public life, her reputation. Her ministry life, obscurity. We don't read a whole lot about Mary. You just have to stop thinking and just accept your gift. I don't know. Did you get all your stuff done yesterday? Well, I made a mistake on the hand out for a little bit to see if it's short on my hand. Well, hello, Miss Pretty Girl in the green dress. Oh, yeah. Did you want Christmas? Yeah. Yes. Oops, sorry. Christmas. Yeah. Ah, I got. <laughs> 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 I think just back it up to pass. Oh, yeah. oh no, 35. Just sort of back it up to see if 35. Ah, good. There you go. Yeah, okay. Because I, I hit something and it's all out of whack there. <laughs> yeah, it bursts scrambled. And that's. Yes, on these, on these I can, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll do that. For the devil's I'll, I'll uh, change it. Thanks.